Every time we gather to worship, the Lord commands his blessings. As the streams of joy flow through our songs, the lifting of hands or lying prostrate before our maker, our lives burst into seasons of endless adoration to God. And this is a sight that pleases the Lord. Like the woman with the box of alabaster, we will continually pour our praise on him like oil. With Jesus Joy, I welcome you to the worship experience. I am your host, Pastor Deborah Omale. On this episode of the program, we are joined by a man who started singing from the age of nine. As he grew in stature, God increased him, and today he is known as an international gospel artist. He is the convener of worship concerts around Nigeria and around the world, titled Refresh, bringing people together from diverse backgrounds, tribes, and tongues to worship God as one. He will be sharing his views right after this break. Family, it's with great joy that I welcome Solomon Lange to the worship experience. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. Thank you so very much. Thank <laughs> it's you. It's an honor. Thank you for accepting our invitation. I'm honored to be here too. It's such, <laughs> Thank I'm you so much. I'm looking forward to having an awesome time. Honestly, worship experience. I, ca I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait to get right into it. I know. I am somebody who has followed you for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I know. You, know. you you know ministered at even our wedding uh, exactly that's so you true. see for a very very long time over 10 years yeah, i have true. followed that's every true. single album that's true. That's and true. i celebrate god for the grace of worship upon Man. your life thank you you know and upon your songs thank you so um my first question how would you define worship worship how do you define worship um you know, usually these days i like i like to think a lot in bible terms when you want to when you want to talk about worship, you go back to, you know, so in Bible interpretation, there's a principle called the principle of first mentioned, right? Mm. So you go back to where a word was first mentioned in the Bible, and then you always make sure that you use it in that context. Mm. The first time, if we, we go back, well, the first time the word worship was mentioned was somewhere around Genesis 22, 5, thereabout, where Ab Abraham, Abraham was about to go sacrifice uh, his I son. Mm. And then he was going with other people, and they were going to climb Mount Moriah, and then he said to the other people, he told the other young men, he said, he said oh, wait here mm. while I go yonder to worship with mm. the lad. Mm. All right. So that's the first time worship was mentioned. Yeah. Um, worship is obedience. Worship is doing what God tells you to do. Mm. Because in that context, he wasn't going to sing a song. He wasn't going to play guitar. He was going to do what God told him to do. So worship is not you doing what you want to do. Worship is, that's why you, somewhere the Bible says, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm. You can decide uh, God is telling you, uh, do this, uh, leave this relationship. You need to walk out of this relationship. And you say, no. Then you come to church and you are lifting holy hands. You even not, though God has asked even you Even though God has <laughs> asked you to do something and you are not doing it, you've not done it. So worship is first obedience, doing what God told you to do. Mm. Then the other parts will now follow, will now be more effective. Worshiping, uh, lifting up of hands mm. and singing songs. But the original part of worship is being is obeying God. Obeying God. Yeah, that's what, so that's my definition definition of worship. Doing what God told you to do, right? Exactly. Then in the New Testament, Jesus was talking um, talking in in uh, John chapter four. Uh, him and the Samaritan woman were mm, talking, mm. you know, and then he, the issue of worship came, and then the issue of location also came up. She said, "Our fathers worshipped on this mountain." But you Jews said we must go to Jerusalem to worship. And then he said to her, oh, I've got news for you. Mm. The game is about to change. I'm the game changer. Mm. Uh, the reason all this has been happening is because Adam fell. But what God wanted, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, all right? I'm yes, just explaining yes, it. What God wanted from the beginning was not for people to have a location where they insist this is the oh only place where we worship. God wanted mm. it to sit in, you can sit on your toilet seat. And worship. And worship. God, God didn't want his presence to be locked up in a building. That was why when Jesus went to the cross, that's why he said to the Samaritan woman, he said, um, these are the kind of worshipers that the Father is seeking for. Mm. Those that will worship him in spirit, the number two, in truth. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So you must be in Christ 
for you to have an effective worship, worship. being truth. Then your spirit will be regenerated, mm. and then you can worship having the Holy Ghost. Mm. Your worship is complete. You obey what God told you to do. You you are born again. You are you are a child of God, mm. and then your spirit. You, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. It makes your your worship amazing. Smooth. <laughs> yeah. And I I just feel it's so. God doesn't make mistakes, and it's and I think as believers we also need to understand that sometimes our greatest miracles happen in the place where we obey. Right. Because. You would think Abraham, who was going to sacrifice his only son, yeah. wouldn't use such a word. Because yeah. you find sometimes people worship based on their moods. That's true. And you find a man who is going to sacrifice his only son, yeah. telling the others to wait. Exactly. While we go worship. Exactly. <laughs> and we all know how the story ended. Very true. You know, so very it's just true. it's just amazing. Very, very true. Very true. So I think we've already talked about it, but I think I need you to nail it in more. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's a spontaneous activity? Is worship a spontaneous activity? Or is it something that is planned? What's your take? Both ways. <laughs> it can be planned. It can be, sp it can, it can be spontaneous. Hmm. The, the, when you are led, he, the Bible says that the they that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Hmm. To other people, to you it might be spontaneous, but for the Spirit of God, he's planned it all along. Oh my God. That when you get to a particular point, he's going to make you worship. <laughs> he, he has the script. You see, God does not give you all the script of your life. Mm. I'll give you an example. I used to live in Kaduna, and then I moved to Lagos. And then for two and a half years, nothing was happening in my life in Lagos. And God came to me and said, I want, and I used to sing R&B and soul. You know, I used to be the next, I wanted to be the next R. Kelly, right? And then God came to me one day, and then Nagori, the song came to me, it was on my birthday. And then God said to me, go back to the north, go to Abuja, go back to the north and reach out to your people. And for a while, for, for those two years, I refused. I just said, no. Lagos, it has to, I have to, to be, be the Lagos. next. Lagos, like, <laughs> it's the entertainment center of yes. Nigeria. This is where music happens. Mm -hmm. And he was just looking at me. He was looking at me. Then one day, I came to Abuja and you know the way you come to a place and then it just sits in your spirit that this is obedience. So I went to Lagos and then I knew that I was out of the perfect will of God. Hmm. So I picked up my guitar, packed my books, left everything else, moved to Abuja. Nothing was happening for me you in Lagos. You obeyed I obeyed. I had to obey the last instruction. That was worship. So when I arrived at Abuja, 2007, started working in the studio. By 2008, you, the whole world started hearing about Nagode. People that were not inviting me in Lagos started inviting me from you? Abuja, from Lagos. Powerful. <laughs> instruction right. and yeah. listening exactly. to the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So he didn't give me the whole script. He didn't show me that mm. if you move to Abuja, Lagos is going to open up for you. If you move back to the north and start reaching out to the people, five continents of the world are going to open up for you. But I didn't see it. I saw me as a big star. I saw me only in Lagos, God. limiting only, yourself. Limiting myself, right? But, but, but to other people, I stumbled on Nagori as a song, but to him, I didn't stumble on it. He, was, mm. he planned it all that along. Song. So, yeah, exactly. That, that song, song I sang at your wedding, right? So, so God, God is very, very, very intentional. He has a script in his hand, but you mm. walk with him, and then he leads you. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I could plan today that I'm going to do uh, so 10 songs during the 30 minutes of worship that we have. Mm -hmm. It's planned. But my band, they, oh, they know that it doesn't <laughs> always work that way. <laughs> it doesn't always work that way. I might, we might have songs that we've rehearsed and we do a lot of rehearsing. But I might come here and he tells me to sing, Praising the Lord always. I'll give you a story. I was invited by, by Redeem, the Redeemed Bible Church in uh, Dallas. Sorry, I don't like doing uh, names mentioning. No, right? not, not here. Trying, we understand. I'm just trying to give you, <laughs> to give you a perspective. <laughs> we understand. Of story. So they were hosting us in, in, in Dallas, right? And then um, I was singing. So I, I was. I love my house songs. Those are songs I like to sing around. Mm -hmm. So the first day I sang the song, it was the North, North American Convention. I sang a house song, and then it, two house songs. And the next day they told me, the, some of the organizers came to me to say that the dad, that, that the Jew said, why is he coming to America? And hearing Nigerian songs, so, was, yeah, that's what the people said. I, I'm not sure if that's what he said. said. And the people may not even remember, because mm. that was not in, I, we can't build a tabernacle and get offended at yes. things that happen. The most important thing was that God wanted me to do something else. So they came to me and they said, you have to sing English songs. And they said it to me just before I went on stage. So, uh, so I was angry. I mean, yeah, start, you know, first, they changed my plans. Mm. So I went back and I said, what would I sing? I didn't plan to sing any English song. So, so they called me up. So I collected the microphone. And I started singing, praising the Lord 
always praising the Lord. I love that always. song. Exactly. It's one song I that love I love that to sing song. alone. And the, whole, and the glory of God filled the whole place. And the whole place caught fire. And then so for the next one and a half months or two months that I was in Dallas, I was singing from one branch of Redeemed Church to another. Because that got to do, they were like, who is this guy? Hmm. They, didn't, they didn't even remember the house of songs. That was, it was that chorus I sang that night. Hmm. That because God, that's what he wanted. Hmm. That's what he wanted. So, so worship can be planned. You, and you should plan worship. Hmm. You should plan to obey God. You should plan to lift up hands. You should intentionally plan your warfare around worship. Hmm. You should plan to wake up at 2 a.m. You're say, talking today, about me then. And say, exactly. And say, today I'm going to wake up at 2 a.m. And I'm not going to bind the devil once. I'm not even going to talk about the <laughs> devil or talk to him. Today, I'm, I'm just, just going, going to worship. worship my God. I'm just going to worship. Oh my God. You know, one of the things the enemy doesn't like is to be dealt with ignominy. <laughs> you must learn sometimes to deal with him with ignominy. Mm -hmm. Just ignore him and worship your father. Concentrate. Concentrate. I, I do that so much. Yeah. There is no single day that goes by wow. that I don't worship. Wow. And it's not because I, oh, I have to worship. It's like, yeah, exactly. I don't feel complete. My children know, my husband knows, everybody wow. Wow. in the car. Wow. In my, it's 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 a habit. Wow. I have to, wow. and I don't feel complete until I have done exactly. so. And yeah. I think my greatest miracle. I don't think I know my greatest miracles have come from a place of worship. Yeah, awesome. where I'm not. Oh God, do this, do this. Exactly. God, do this, do this. Make exactly. this, make this. He yeah. he created me. He knows what I need even Word. before I ask. Word. So I'm just going to give him the only thing that he can give himself, exactly. and let him do the rest exactly. for me. That sounds so good. Yeah, so <laughs> Father, just do the rest. You are my only concentration. And every time there's been testimony. Amen, amen. Okay, this one I need to know okay. personally. I know your fans mm -hmm. would want to know. There's something about your songs. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I listen to you and I'm like, there is no way this guy just wrote this song. <laughs> how do you come about how do you come about your songs? How do you write them? How does it come to you? What do you do, yeah. you know, to get such inspirational yeah. songs? Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny because if you ask those who are around me, I don't sit down to write songs. I receive songs. And the Bible says that out of the abundance of the, of the heart, the mouth speaks. speaks. Oh I live God. in the word of God. I live, I live, I practically, practically live in the word of God. Mm. Uh, if you listen to me talk, you will know that there is more to me than just sing. Why, see, one yeah. of the reasons why we're having worship experiences, yeah. we hear this phenomenal yeah. gospel artist yeah, yeah. and their songs bless our lives. Exactly. But I feel there is more behind the man, yeah, behind the woman Very that can true. also bless us. And there's a lot that we can learn just by hearing people like you, for Very instance, true. speak to us Very because true. there is a gifting on your life. Word, you can't word, deny it. It word, is obvious for everyone word, to see. Word. And so when you say things like this, you're just getting, yeah. that's why you're here. Definitely, definitely. I, so tell us, tell us more, 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 I more. Practically, I, <laughs> more. I, I practically live in the Bible. I practically live, I listen to teachings like every day. So that I, I study the word of God a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I, YouTube is like my, one of my best friends, one was created for people like me. Cause I could, I, if I want to listen to you, I'll go to the YouTube <laughs> channel. And, I, and I, I can spend one month just watching you and listening to what you're teaching. So, so it forms my thinking. It forms, if I'm going through anything in my mm -hmm. life at a particular moment, I look for teachings so, and series of teachings on that particular issue. Mm -hmm. And I listen to them over and over and over and over and put myself in that atmosphere. So, so, so my songs are always responses, like spontaneous mm -hmm. responses to whatever it is that is happening in my life at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so it's the word of God that I've poured into me that now mm -hmm. comes out as a song. Hmm. That's what always happens. So, so, so Nagode was, for instance, like Nagode, right? And Grace, I know. Okay, Grace. Grace is, woo, okay. <laughs> I cried Grace, when I listened to that. Grace, I don't even want to talk about this. Oh, I don't wow. start crying. Grace is a personal song to me. It's very, very, it's very, very personal. Uh, so Grace came to me in, in a place where God is showing you so many things. Mm. So many things that he wants to use you to do. And this is for years. Show, showing you pictures of great things he wants you to do. Mm. And you keep telling God like Moses, why don't you use somebody else? Because I don't think I'm, I'm equipped for this. I, I don't think that how do you, I won't have enough education to do this. I don't think my family background, I've always, I was always complaining to God. Mm. I, don't, I was trying to convince God. I've always tried to convince, even today. <laughs> I've tried convincing God. There is, there is something he has, he has told me to do. I told him, I said, but 
why you do you want... think I'm the one you should use? Me, I'm fine with just singing. People organizing programs, I go around and sing, and I'm fine. Mm. Why do you want to put this responsibility on me? So I always, from one, from when I was much younger, I've always tried to convince God to use somebody else and not me. Mm. And then God always tells me, my grace mm. is more than enough for you. So that's how grace came. That everywhere that I go, and and and, and so over the years, when I see places that I go and I, and see how our, how our ministry has grown and people mm -hmm. tell us how much of you know, impact we've been in their lives. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I, I just said, man, everywhere I go, all I see is grace. Because I couldn't have deserved this. I couldn't have worked for enough for this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there is no way I could have. I mean, I look at my family. I look at I look at my wife. Every time I look at my wife, I just I just shout grace. You know, because <laughs> only grace could have produced this. And your wedding was so beautiful. You were there exactly. Your wedding you made was it so beautiful. You made it beautiful. You're one of the people that. The beautiful. wedding was so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. So I love you and Flora's relationship. Yeah, good. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate. Appreciate. Mm. You know. So, so I think I've seen a lot of things in my life that was produced by grace. So then I came to a place in my life where you know, the only thing that will produ produce much more mm. is grace. Mm. It's grace. It's just grace. It's just grace that will make people. I mean, you have had people like you in my life who, who just love me. I have people who just do things for me. You can't even who I didn't know from Adam. Mm. God will just bring people and just make them fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. you. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You didn't do anything to attract their attention. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so it's grace. And so it's the same thing with, with, with you, you just study the word of God and then the word of God. Uh, so people ask me, what's your inspiration? I said, God's word. Mm. My, my response to any situation in this life. Mm. Okay, how did, I, how did I marry a beautiful woman, right? When I was a teenager, like when, as a teenager, I read the Bible over and j just because I was looking for answers because mm. I came from a very, very, very poor background. I was searching for answers. So my reading the Bible, I wasn't, re I wasn't reading it because I was trying to please God or a religious thing. No, I was searching for answers. I was, I, w I kept searching for answers. I know what answers. you mean. Yeah, I wasn't, I was, other people were doing it because they're Christians. I was searching for answers. I was depressed. I, know what you mean. I was discontented. Mm. I was like one of those people that went to David. So, and he told me that there are answers in the Bible. So, as a teenager, I read the Bible over, like from Genesis to Revelation, many times over, searching for answers. I was just searching for answers. And one of the things that I stumbled on was that Abraham's wife was very fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much so that kings, kings, like two different kings, wanted to take her away and gave him one. You know, he had to even lie in some places. Yeah. Isaac, Rebecca was pretty. <laughs> Leah was fine. <laughs> and the Bible said they were fair. I took it literally. <laughs> so yours it was must referring be to beauty. And my, fair. I said my heart must be fine and fair. Nothing against <laughs> yes, of sisters course, that are of dark, course. all right? It's just me, just my mind. <laughs> so No, but that also means reading the word and literally taking it yes, to heart. Yes. That's yes, part exactly, of what it means. Exactly. Exactly. So I always confessed it. I'll marry a beautiful wife and she's gonna be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and as you desired it. It came to pass. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, I know you've shared with us your story of Lagos and all of that, mm. but even when you came to Abuja, yeah. following God's will, yeah. did you ever feel like stopping what you're doing? Did you ever feel like, I'm tired? Yeah. I, I, not like tired, tired, but you just don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Let me do something else yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, yes, I have. Many, many times. How did you come out of it? Tell us. So, like I told you that I'd gotten myself so addicted to God's word mm. that that has always been the way out for me. When I get depressed, the only thing I do is I worship and I, and I read the Bible. And I didn't, I didn't know anything else to do mm. but to do that. Mm. So, each time I came, to, I faced a brick wall. That's all I did. I worship or I speak in tongues. And I study the word of God. Mm. That's, that's my lifestyle. I study, I speak in tongues, <laughs> I mm. study the word of mm. God, right? So, um, and then one, I think one, one, another thing that played, that's always played a very, very pivotal role in my life is church and pastor. Like my, the church I go to, so I could, I could hit brick walls and things are not working and, and I'm discouraged. The mistake the enemy will do is to allow me to go to church on either it's Wednesday service or on a Sunday service. I hope everybody's listening because yeah. most times when people begin to feel depressed, yeah. when they begin to feel sad, yeah. 
The devil will try to stop them from coming to church, listening to the yeah. word. The devil will try to stop them from worshiping. That's true. That is when you need to worship the that's most. The Cause that's where our power lies. That's the truth. That's, that's the truth. When the enemy wants to finish you, when he wants to destroy you, he isolates you. Yes. He isolates you and makes you feel like, ah, you even be offended. You, you can even be offended at the past or offended at somebody. The enemy is trying to isolate you. Once he isolates you, then he makes you, because, because faith comes by hearing. The only thing that can bring mm. you out of anything is faith. And if you are not, an, if you are not in an environment where you, you hear the word of God, said. then you are, you, are, you are really, really, really in trouble. So, so mm. one of the things that always happens to me is whatever, whatever happens, I'll look for church. Mm. And I make sure that, I, it's a, I mean, God has always blessed me with, amazing pastors well, that love worship, love mm. prayer, and love the word of God. Mm. So, I, so that's w the only way I can tell you I came out is go to church. Go to church. Even when I, when I don't understand, I'll go to church and the pastor is teaching. As the pastor is teaching, he's saying something else. God is telling me something else mm. from what he is saying. Yes. Yeah. God is telling me something else from what he's saying. I, I remember I get this one. I like, to tell, I like to tell stories. You know, so I always thought that I was going to marry from the north because I sing a lot of Hausa songs, right? My wife is Igbo. She's from Anambra State mm. in Nigeria. For those of you who are not from mm. Nigeria. And I always said, I must marry from Ariwa. I must marry from Ariwa. So one day, one day, I thought I heard God say to me, you know, that, you see, this is your, this is your mentality. You will, miss, you will miss your destiny. But I didn't take it seriously. I just, I just thought, you know, one of those things you hear and you mm. hear. And then one day we were in church. And my pastor was teaching. He was teaching about something else. And then he was passing around me. And he wasn't talking to me. He, was, he didn't even look at me. You know, say, you know, this is your Ariwa mentality. Oh my God. This is how you will miss the will of God. Because you must, you must marry from your tribe, Abi. He said, you will miss the will. <laughs> this was few weeks before I met my wife. So, and and if say, not for that word, there's I, a possibility. There's no way I would have married that evil girl. Ibo, I, no way. There's no way I would have married that evil girl. I don't think anybody else would have been so much of a blessing to me like God, like God has used my wife to be a blessing. I don't think there's any human being. I'm, I mean, I'm exaggerating, maybe. You're not. But it's how you feel. I haven't met any person more selfless. Yes. But the, but the idea I had in my head was that Igbo people like more me. Mm, you know, I like that. And I was you know, like, Nigerians were very good at stereotyping. Yeah, people. very true. A very whole very race true. and a whole tribe. Just conclude on them. Presumed to be a certain way. E exactly. So, so I'm just telling you how being under a pastor. That's how I, we got here. Yes. Being under a pastor who teaches the word of God mm -hmm. and then go out going to the right church and mm. being committed mm. can help transform your life. Even mm. when you are in the darkest moments of your life, I've... you, you get to hear you something. Out. You bring you out. That fellowship. It's impossible for you to be in that, in that, that fellowship and you are, you, are, you are consistently attending that fellowship. Your life won't, won't be the same. So mm. it's the same reason when I see people attacking pastors and there are people who are fake too. Yeah. But when I see people attacking pastors, and I, I just laugh. I, just, I see even believers. I just laugh. And I said, you, they are attacking your, the secret to your success. Mm. And you are joining them to do it. Mm. Because some of us, there is no way we would have come out without church and without pastors. Mm. Yeah, people like me. Some people maybe. People like me too. There's no way we would have we're come We're plenty. Maybe we would have, some of us would have committed <laughs> suicide long, long ago mm. and are gone. You know, so yeah. So that, that's how. So, so back to the question. How do I come out? How did you come, out, you come of out of it? The word of God, being in the right church. So I need people to, you know, sometimes people feel when God has spoken to you about a thing yeah. and just because it's not coming to pass, doesn't mean it will come to pass. No, 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 Some no. people are so quick to throw in the towel. That's Some people true. are so quick to stop believing in themselves. That's oh, God true. told me to do this. Ah, but I've waited one year. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. But here you are today. Even though God told you, leave Lagos, come to Abuja, yeah. you still had issues. Yeah, of course. But you came out of it because you kept trusting of and you kept believing. Of course. God bless you so much for Thank sharing you. your insights with you. us. Thank and you. then lastly, uh, so many gospel artists are upcoming. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you have for them? You know, you, you have been very successful. Yeah, God. God and has God has good. helped you all this while and yeah. you're still getting better and better and better. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say would be an advice that you would give, something that has worked for you, yeah. to anybody who is upcoming, anybody who will say, oh, I want to be like Solomon Lange, I want to minister like him. Yeah. What advice would you give them? Um, what would I say? <laughs> okay, where do I start from? One, have a vision. You can't get anywhere. Or you, can, you can only become what you are seeing, mm. what you're seeing on the inside. So I can also tell you that there were moments in my life when God planted a vision so strong in my heart 
that I was always, you know the Bible, what the Bible says in Hebrews? I think it's, it's, at, it's at, the, at the end of Hebrews 11 or at the mm-hmm. beginning of Hebrews 12. When he says some of these people, some of these fathers, mm-hmm. that they saw this promise from afar. Mm. They embraced it. Mm. They had fellowship with it. They, they, they didn't get to it. They didn't see Jesus. It, you know, said, but they, they rejoiced and declared that they were strangers on earth. Mm. You must, your vision for where you're going to must be so strong that you become a stranger to whatever it is that you're, you're going through. Mm. You, you, your vision is so strong that you live in it. You, are, you even brought to situations. You, you know those days I used to... <laughs> Okay, so in my family, I love that, I love that, I love that. So in my family, in my family, I'm the, in my partner family, I'm the first person that drove to drive a car. I'm telling you, the first person that drove a car. God has blessed us with many cars over the years, but I'm the first person that drove a car in my. So I didn't have a car. In those days when I didn't have a car, I'll be trekking. Even when I came to Algeria, I'll be trekking. But in my mind, I was driving. I couldn't even drive, but I always drove in my car. You know, I'll pick, I'll be doing like this. I'll, Im- imaginary, imaginary, really. <laughs> I'll pick a car and I'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going to call you back. I'm driving right now. I was trekking. That's how strong my imagination. That's how strong Papa I was connected to my so vision. Papa so much in the power of imagination. Yep, yep. So I, I can connect. Yep. I, I could imagine, no matter what you said to me, if a babe told me, back down, I'll just laugh. It will, it will hurt me, but I see myself. I used to see myself one day seeing the same girl telling me, ah, I wish I married you. I, I'm telling you those days, if you had met me those days, there was nothing good in me to be to admire. Do you understand? So, so what I would say to, a, to an up, upcoming person is, you first need to have a vision. Mm, have a vision. A dogged vision. Have the kind of vision that nothing can distract you. Mm. That if anyone does not believe in your vision, the person becomes a stranger. Me, if you don't believe in, anybody who doesn't believe in what I'm doing, from, from years ago, if you didn't believe in what I was doing or don't believe in what I'm doing, you, are, you don't exist. You have ceased to exist. Mm. I'm not saying I hate you. You don't even exist, so I can't hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear. So, so you, the person ceases to exist. So what you say, your opinion does not matter. If you sign an opinion, the opinion of a dead man doesn't matter. <laughs> that, that's how bad. Maybe you it's a choleric in me speaking. I believe so much in it. So you must believe so much in it that only those who can add to your and vision. Push. And push. It's that vision that will make you push. Then you now find a place because, because you see, you must find your company. Find the right church. Mm. Where your gifts will be will be will be harnessed mm-hmm. and developed. Mm. Find the be among your vision must be so strong that even when you're going to relationships, it should be your relationship should, should be determined by your vision. Mm. The church you I go love to, that. the church you go to should be determined by your vision. The 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 friends you have. If if you're going somewhere, where are you where are you joining? Why the Bible says do not but you know what yoked. they call it? They call it yoked. <laughs> exactly. It's called yoke, you know. Why are you be equally yoked with people who are not um, driven. Are not driven, having the kind of drive you have. So that's the first thing. Then get the right place. Let yeah, your gift. Get church makes it so easy. You know, secular people those days have to be going to nightclubs to get their gifts mm-hmm. honed. We have church, and church is so free. You can go to church and learn to be a music di- movie director. You can learn keyboard for free in church. You can learn. You can learn I've many things. I've never looked at it from that. You can learn many things in church for free. We learn things for free in church. Things that you should learn in school. You learn business in church. If if one of these sisters comes to you today and say, Ah, oh, I love the way your makeup, how you wear, you would just say, Ah, oh, come, come, let me teach you. You would just speak her. Hmm. If she goes to someone else. But a lot else, of I, I, it's thank you so much. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit that is just speaking yeah. through you. Yeah. I think a lot of us miss that part. The part yes. where we can be trained, yes, yes. skilled yep. in the word, exactly. and even you know, in any hand work that we want to do, <laughs> exactly. any business. Exactly. Because even from the altar, sometimes when I'm watching, you know, TVN and some of these, you know, gospel um, stations, and yeah. I see some ministers doing certain things just yeah. to help us understand the exactly. word. And, and I'll just think to myself, these people will not make us turn mad people <laughs> just because we're trying to. Yeah. And there's so much you learn, even yeah. for business, yeah. for your marriage, everything. for everything. everything. It's in church. Everything. I mean, look, okay, look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful building. I came here, I was, you know, let me tell you, I came when I arrived, when we drove in, and then the ladies came to welcome us. You know what came to my mind? Hmm, King Solomon. The Bible says, there was, I'm talking about the level of excellence here, mm. right? The Bible says that King Solomon, went, Queen of Sheba, mm-hmm. right? Went to visit Solomon. Mm-hmm. The Bible says she fainted, that there was no spirit left in her. When she saw the level of organization, mm. how people were, the way people, the way people dressed up, the way they served food, the way, they say, the Bible says she fainted that there was no life left in her, that she fainted. If Women, I'm, get that, get that, get exactly, that, get that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we look at this level of excellence. I learned excellence. I learned to dress in church. I was born in Wasa Station, Southern Kaduna, 
There's nobody there that could teach me how to dress. I learned to dress in church. I learned. I went to. A, I went to a primary school where they used to teach us in house. This is this is Kubewa Okra. I learned to speak English in church. <laughs> so so being so for every young man or young woman, I mean you can you can learn. Look at the level of excellence. I know how this hall used to be. Yeah. Right. I see the level of acoustic. Mm. How you guys have achieved. Look at look at the setup. Somebody can be sitting there, learn from this, and put it in their business. Mm. Somebody can learn interior decoration for free in church, and start it up as a business. But people, but when people go to church, they just think of religion. They don't think they don't see the things Outside close to the them. Books. No, they don't. See. Jesus. One of the things I love, things I loved about Jesus was that all his teachings, he always taught things from the things that you could see. Mm. So you can your life can change by just looking at the things that you are seeing every day. Stop looking for spiritual downloads. By just you can just look at this and go like, wow! Look at the way she wrote her name. Look at the way she dressed. Look at this background. Look at and you add it to what add you're it doing. Add it to yours exactly. And the level of excellence would just be. I know of people who, a lot of the people who produce secular music were music directors in church. They learned music in church. A lot of them learned music in church. Right, so you come from. So if I, as a young person, and that's where we go here, as a young person, get the right church where I, there's high level of excellence. Look, at, see the way you did your next level 2020. That's that's like yeah. those days it used to be my year off. <laughs> Do you understand? But this is another level. So people can bring that kind of innovation. You can learn. Inno- <laughs> you can learn innovation, right? You're doing worship experience today, mm. right? Somebody can be sitting there, carry their phone. I say, oh, there are people around my environment. Uh, Pastor Deborah is inviting big artists. I can, I can, I can start creating content on my uh, YouTube page or on my Facebook page or on my Instagram by interviewing people around my vicinity. Just bring them in front of your parlor. They sit down and you interview them. Bring simple life. You, you never can tell where it will go from there. With God, eh? You, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Mustard seeds like Acha in Nigeria, right? He yes. said, Jesus said it's the smallest of all seeds. He said, but when it's planted, you need to plant it. And planting is taking a step. Mm. You need to take a step. So if you come to church like this and you're learning from the choir and you get to sing, you ask the music director, oh, I have a song that God gave me. I would like to share. And then people get to sing your song. Mm-hmm. Then you see how people are blessed by the song that you wrote. You would never can tell what that does to you. Mm. That... You can you see people getting blessed by the song. The first time I heard, I saw people singing the song that I wrote. I was like, "Wow, that's my song." You know, I, I inspired some of them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, some of your songs I listen to, like yeah. um, um, "Love Has Found Me." Ah. And I'm like, why didn't I? Why why, why was this song not just given to me? <laughs> <laughs> the, I don't know. It happens to me a lot. I listen to some songs. I'm like, happens to me. This this is just me Very singing true. right Very now. True. This is my Very song. True. You right. know, and I make it mine, sing it my own way, right. and it ministers to me like yeah. different things. Yeah. That, your, that thing your, happens to your me a lot. Your talent is. Thank you. Your, your gifts. We thank, thank God for you. Nigeria thanks God for you. Because I do a lot of your house songs yeah. when I'm ministering, because yeah. I like to worship before. Yeah. And there are certain songs I've done every time I'm going to minister, I'm sure for the past five, six years. Yeah. And even when I say, oh, you do this song every time you minister, do something else. Yeah. And then I'm, I come down, yeah. and then sometimes I even have it on my iPad. Okay, yeah. this is a worship song. And then I just go wow. back to that wow. same song that wow. I've been doing every wow. day. Wow. So that tells me a lot about, about, about you, about the gifting of God upon your life. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. I am sure a lot of your fans, a lot of people listening, myself included, have learned a lot. Trust me, I have learned so much Amen. that I'm going to add Amen. <laughs> some Amen. of what I'm doing already. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Truly, the wisdom of God through men is many-sided. We are truly made for worship. If you are just watching us, this is the worship experience with Pastor Deborah Omale. Watch the worship experience on Divine Hand Television on any free-to-air decoder every Friday at 7 p.m. West African time. In South Africa, Divine Hand is also on two DSTV channels, DSTV Public Channel 36 and DSTV Public Channel 1062 on the Explorer decoder. You can also enjoy the worship experience in its entirety on our YouTube channel, Futuring Solomon Lange. Click on the link and don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.
Let our worship rise continuously. Amen.